Good evening and welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education business meeting. The date is Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. Can we call the attendance, please? <laughs> Mrs. Gammon. <laughs> yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. <coughs> uh, Mr. Kelleher. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know if I have to say yes or not. Miss Leong. Here. Miss Lindstrom. Here. Miss Tarpinian. Here. Miss Trapini Huff. Here. Miss Leisure. Uh, she's been excused. And Mr. Shumway. He's been excused. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, agenda I'm 3.0. Can everybody please join me for the pleasure? Agenda item 4.0 are adjustments to the agenda. I do have a few adjustments to vote on this evening. Um, underneath uh, agenda item 10.0, general public comment, I would like to um, amend the agenda to move up the 12.0 new business, so the mix and mingle waiver request and the mix and mingle donation. Underneath that, I would like to move um, our executive session, which is a discussion or consideration of the employment, appointment, assignment, duties, to return to public session. And then 13.2 actually needs to come out and be its own agenda item, which would be after the executive session. And that is a motion to approve the appointment of a superintendent of Scarborough Public Schools. So all of that would happen ahead of continuing business. So is there a second? second. Thank you. All. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Um, agenda item 5.0 is the superintendent's report. All right, so um, I'll keep this brief. We've got a lot on the agenda tonight and just have a few dates here in May that I just wanted to highlight. Um, I know uh, Jillian and Jenna likely will be uh, talking a little bit more about our uh, new night, that uh, new event that, that we're gonna be doing this uh, on the 30th of May, celebrating our seniors and connecting students, families, and communities. So, um, really looking forward to that. That's going to be 4 to 6.30 on May 30th. You'll hear a little bit more about, about that a little bit later. Um, and then also we've been uh, continuing to work really hard making adjustments uh, in between readings um, for our budget proposal for uh, FY25 uh, and just highlighting the town council meeting second reading and budget vote, which is uh, the 15th at 7 p.m. And then also the night after, the evening after on the 16th, uh, recognizing our staff members that are retiring this year. Um, so that'll be at 6.30 on the 16th, right before uh, our next board meeting. Perfect, thank you. Are there any questions for Jeff? All right, wonderful. Agenda item 6.0 is a chair report. I'm also going to keep mine short. I think we... Um, it, you know, just with the interesting timing of our last meeting, we just um, did these reports last week. But um, I, I just have one update, and that is that we have um, election day coming soon, Tuesday, June 11th. Um, on the ballot is the school budget referendum, and then there are two open school board seats and two people um, running for those seats. So we would really appreciate um, all the support from the community to vote for both the budget and to vote for the tools two school board seats. Um, there is a link on the web on the slide, not on the website, the link on the slide that would take you to the Scarborough town of Scarborough page where you can request an absentee ballot. Should you be interested in voting that way? Otherwise we would love to see you um, at the high school on June 11th. And I have one more that I'm going to turn over to Jenna and Jillian and Carolyn. Okay, sure, sure. All right, so uh, Jeff already mentioned this, but uh, we are having the Senior Citizen Dinner on May 30th. The link is live, the sign up is live. Uh, we have some flyers that are going out in the community. Um, and there will be dinner, dessert, and beverages, of course, and raffles. We're hoping to have some student groups we, and uh, 
We actually do have a few signed up so far. Um, I know that the Scarborough Education Foundation will also be joining us. Um, we, we actually work, yeah, this is, Jim Dandies is looking uh, into joining us. We have actually pretty, this came together really well, uh, all things considered. So um, we have, I don't know, 20 some odd sign up so far. It's early, so all, all great stuff. Looking forward to it. Are they going to serve on their unicycles? <laughs> I actually have. I that bet question. they could. I mean, have you seen now them that, with the spinning plates? That would be something. Yeah. So that would be worthy of a ticket right there. <laughs> oh yes, and it is a it is a free event for our seniors. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, three of you, for your hard work on this. This is really exciting. All right, any questions for myself or for Jillian, Freyla, I mean, Jillian, Carolyn, or Jenna? Anyone? <laughs> All right, agenda item 7.0 are the committee reports, and the first is the communications committee. So, Jenna? Yeah, so I'm also really stoked about that senior citizen dinner, um, and I'm very happy at, of, at how things came together so far, or how things are coming together so far. Um, okay, so communications, our next meeting is going to be May 9th. Um, we are seeking more spotlight nominations, so you can click into that and please nominate your colleagues because we're going to, we really want to have a, a stockpile of them for the upcoming school year too, so we can just keep churning them out every month. Um, it's one of the things that we really look forward to every month during our board meetings. It really makes us feel like our teachers and staff are just doing an amazing job and it gives us all an insight of to how other people view the staff and faculty here in Scarborough. Um, and then I wanted to do a special thanks and congratulations to our high school students, Calvin, I, I might be butchering this, Calvin Venagoni Ranger and Jack Murnain. Um, they wrote an article for us covering unified basketball and their article is in this week's uh, town newsletter. And we're actually, we've submitted it to the leader and we're just waiting on information on that. And hopefully that'll be out there as well. Um, and then we're also working on getting information out to vote. So that's it for communications. Oh, and then that picture there is, uh, accompanies the article and the photo is from Eric Terrell. That's it for communications. That's awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Very cool. And then right now as scheduled, our curriculum committee is on May 14th at 12 to 1. So no new updates there. We've been behind. <laughs> the artwork is beautiful. That was from, the, okay, so let me go into this. This is actually on the district website. If you check out the curriculum page, which the district has put in a lot of work into putting out curriculum information on there. So this is artwork, original artwork created by a Scarborough Middle School student. So if you click into the middle school tab, that's one of the first things that you see and then you'll kind of be able to click through to see everything that they're, hmm. that's in their curriculum that we've been discussing over the last couple of years now. That's awesome. Very good, thank you, Jenna. All right, finance, Carolyn. All right, um, short and sweet. <laughs> we uh, had a joint workshop with the town council last night and uh, the goal that we have been given that will be reviewed and um, maybe passed, maybe not, um, is, will be considered anyway is to find another $800,000. So if I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping we're gonna be able to have a, a finance committee meeting on Monday uh, the six, um, if if Kate and Diane and Jeff are available, and we'll get that talked through, and then our next regularly scheduled meeting will be the twenty seventh at four p.m. Perfect. I'm sorry. What? Is Memorial Day? Is it Memorial Day? Oh, is it? It is yeah. Memorial Day. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So that's a bad so, day. So never mind. So Perhaps we'll, we'll circle back to that day. Yeah. We'll <laughs> maybe move it up a week. All right. Thank you, Freyla. <laughs> All right. Um, I know we have a presentation later, but are there any questions for Carolyn right now? 
All right, very good. Thank you. Um, DEI committee. Um, the DEI committee also has an event coming up on May 21st that we uh, would like to invite the public to. It has to do with um, a presentation about what the committee's been up to and specifically some information about MLL. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's a very similar slide to last week. Our last meeting was on <laughs> April 9th. Our next meeting is May 14th, um, and all are welcome. Perfect. Is the, um, the meeting on the 21st, is it going to be Zoom and, like, hybrid no, it's, just it's in person. In person it's in person only. Okay. There's just no way to make it via Zoom because um, it's going to be in going to be small group discussions, and there was no way to facilitate it with the technology. Gotcha. Thank you. All right, I. I'm sorry, I did something to my. Oh, right. I'll, I'll keep talking. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. The next slide is the from... negotiations uh, committee update. Um, we had our um, last meeting the, this afternoon. Um, negotiations um, are going well. We had a very productive uh, session. And we look forward. We have a couple more dates on the book this month coming right up. Um, and we're working really hard to get all three proposals done uh, before the end of the school year. That is our stated goal. And um, we are working hard uh, to meet that goal. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm hopeful you'll have an update for us soon. I would be very happy to. Perfect. Um, one more, and then I'll, I'll pass over questions to you. All right. On policy committee, uh, this is also a similar slide. We are turning through the B policies. Um, we will see second reading of BBAB, uh, BBBA, BIA, and BIAR um, later on today. Um, they are organizational uh, policies. Our next meeting is Monday at 4 o'clock. Um, that is hybrid over Zoom and in person, um, and we're going to continue to churn through the B policies unless and until we interrupted by something more important that needs to bump it. Um, and the goal is to just go through all the policies and get them updated post-2020. Awesome. Thank you. Are there any questions for Freyla and any of the committees? The three? All right. Keep going through. New building committee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the last meeting was April 29th. Um, the members put out their solutions, what they thought would be some options for um, to solve our space issues. Um, we are going to be getting a little bit of an update on that since we were not in attendance, um, Leanne and I. Um, there are some major updates coming to the website. Uh, this has been in collaboration with the communications subcommittee. Um, Elizabeth, uh, I, I always, I'm going to mess up her name, Von Stadi, I think, uh, and uh, our own Brian from uh, the IT staff he has been incredible working with them and has done a ton of work. Uh, there have been a lot of requested changes, so he has been very responsive. We are very grateful. The next meeting is next Monday. There will be a deeper dive into some of the options presented. Um, and then they are starting to prepare for the workshop that is coming up in, what, June? 26. 26, thank you. So lots of work going on there. We are eager to see how things roll out on Monday. Thank you. Any questions for Jillian? All right. Um, agenda item 8.0, our liaison reports. Are there any updates from last week to know? <clears throat> on the, uh, the town, uh, not town council, what am I thinking? Uh, Ad Hoc Community Center, they had a meeting scheduled for last Thursday, but it was canceled. So when they have a new one, we'll, we'll give an update at that point. All right. Thank you. All right, um, seeing as our students are excused this evening, we'll um, bypass student reports 9.0. Um, agenda item 10.0 is general public comment. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment this evening? Is there anybody online? Diane. All right. See, seeing none, we will close general public comment. Our new agenda item 11.0 is the mix and mingle waiver request. Hi there, I'm back. <laughs> so every year um, I come by and ask if I, we can please, as a club, uh, get a waiver for the use of the multi-purpose room and waiver of custodial fees at the Eight Corners School on Thursday nights throughout the school year so we can all learn how to square dance. 
And thank you guys for all your hard work, everything you do. And I hope when you retire, you all can come and learn how to square dance, because then you're busy all Thursday nights. Um, so we have been dancing in Scarborough for over 25 years. Um, and just as a side note, the New England Round and Square Dance Convention was held last weekend over at the Sheraton and in the mall, and there were 600 people there dancing. Yeah. It was crazy. It was wonderful. <laughs> so square dancing, you know, is live and it's viable. We had people, uh, even representatives from the Texas uh, National Convention there and the Florida National, uh, Louisiana National Convention there, wow. complete in his alligator suit. So we do have some fun too. Uh, but in order to support that, um, we would request the waiver of the fees uh, for our tiny little group of 32 or so. There are about 10 clubs in the state of Maine. Uh, and we have had this year eight students, which is good for us. Mm. Mm. Once you learn all 60 moves, you can dance anywhere on the planet, mm. literally. So. Any questions? Well, thank you for joining us again. We, I look forward to your visit every year. Thank it's you. fun. Thank, <laughs> thank you for you. coming. Um, okay, agenda item 12.2 is the mix and mingle donation. So do you want to tee that up and we'll... I have some permission on that here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you voting on that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the mix and mingle waiver request? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Thank you for holding me in line. Um, all in favor? <laughs> it is unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck with your, your dancing for next year in your world. I wonder if there can be a lobster suit to match the, the alligator sure there, suit next I'm year. I'm sure there is one out there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, have a great year next year. The donation, um, right. for those who you do, who don't know, um, we will have our annual meeting at which time we will decide what the donation will be. It's usually 300 to $500, goes right to the school department, so. Thank you very much for your donation offer. So um, do I have a motion to approve the mix and mingle donation as presented? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you. Okay, um, agenda item. The new 12.0 is the executive session. So is there a motion for um, to move into executive session for the discussion or consideration of the employment, appointment, assignment, duties, promotion, demotion, compensation, Evaluation, disciplining, resignation, or dismissal of an individual to return to public session. So, so moved. moved. You can't beat me. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Wonderful. Thank you. We will be right back.
All right, welcome back. Thank you for your patience. Agenda item, oh goodness, uh, what was that, 11, 12.2 is a motion to approve the appointment of a superintendent, Diane Nadeau, um, of Scarborough Public Schools pending the completion of a negotiated contract. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Any comments? Congratulations, Diane. Yeah. This yes. is so well deserved. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, very excited for you. Yep. I'm more excited for Scarborough. <laughs> well, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I think in every step of the process, um, since I've known you, you've demonstrated capable leadership. You're prepared. You know the facts. Um, you're educated. You're respectful. You listen. That's shown through the application process, um, and I cannot be more happy to see you take this role. I think it also shows how um, impactful you are within the community also. Um, everybody knows who you are, and I think that is a fantastic asset also to all of us. So, congrats. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> the search is over. Me too. <laughs> I don't know how you follow that, but I, I, I'm so grateful that you're willing to step into this role, and uh, mm -hmm. we, are, we are definitely so lucky, so thank you. And I'll just chime in one last thing. I echo everything everybody has said, and when I first got the news about just le leaving us, um, my first thought was, oh, Diane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was just a natural, and I'm so glad that you took the step. Thank you. And um, I will say that I remember the very first time I met you was um, dropping my kid off at school and you um, greeting him and me turning around and saying, why does she know your name? And he said, no, 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 no. She knows everyone's name. It's okay. And that was my very first experience with you. And it was new for, for me. You know, we moved here from um, the D.C. metro area and the principal doesn't know anybody. And so that was really something special. And to watch you progress to the assistant superintendent and watch you have really great leadership with, with Sandy and with Jeff and get to really grow in your role, there is nobody, nobody better suited for this role than you. And the fact that the entire leadership team is here to support you is really, really amazing as well and speaks volumes to the respect that your team and your staff have for you, and that's really special. So congratulations. We are so happy. We are so happy for you. We're so happy for the community. And we are sad to see you go, but thank you for helping to prepare, prepare Diane for us. All right, so on that, is there anybody in the public wishing to make comment? Yes. I just wish that was caught on video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a first, we have a second, we had discussion. All in favor? And it is unanimous. Thank you so much and congratulations. <laughs> All right, now it feels a little like, woo, going to our continuing business, but here we are. We're going to go right, we're going to keep right in there. Um, our agenda item 13.0 is continuing business. The 13, 13.1 is the second reading of the FY24 budget. But look here, you have an audience today? Yes. You, you've heard it before. You wrote the thing. <laughs> no, I, I'm not kidding. Is that okay, Shannon? Of Did course we, it's okay, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you for coming and showing your support. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, I do better in an empty room. Hey, that got it. <laughs> That got everybody to stand up. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. They were waiting for a big announcement, mm -hmm. and they got it, which is pretty cool. 
Except for Mike, he's here for me. Mike is here for you. <laughs> Mike's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd everyone go? All right, I'm ready. You ready? Ready. Okay, let's, let's roll. That would be me, sorry. I tried to take out all the weird transitions, Diane. But in my slide deck, I just want to say, in my slide deck, it was all like really straightforward. And when I put it in the board slide deck, that's when weird stuff happens. No? Okay. Um, so this is, this is a, a fairly familiar slide, I think, for folks who are regular watchers of the series. Um, same slide we talked about last week, and the idea being that, you know, that I'm a, a, a paper monster and I like to have big piles of things, but we're really trying to direct people to be able to find things online, find it easily. Um, we're happy to give printed copies. I have printed materials over here. Um, and uh, actually, since we're fancy on both, if you guys actually need anything, um, but we do have a website, uh, web page on our website that is specifically dedicated to the budget. It includes all the materials that we um, have provided for the first reading. And then uh, we've got sort of a calendar in there with all of the meetings. And as each meeting goes by, we're kind of adding materials and updates. Um, tonight's meeting, uh, there's no materials attached to that yet, but there will be. Um, as soon as we get through, I can post some more stuff tomorrow. Um, the first reading of our school budget was passed by the board on March 21st, which seems like either a really long time ago or 10 minutes, depending on how you look at it. Um, and at that time, uh, our total education budget gross, meaning the full expenditures for our operating budgets was at an increase of 7.18%. And the net budget, uh, which is what we call the tax request to the town after all of our non-tax revenues are factored in, was an increase of 4.68%. Since that time, uh, we have had what we call items in motion. Um, when we come out with our first reading budget, it's quite early in the year, and there are a lot of things about the coming fiscal year that we don't know yet. Um, information uh, about some of our quite expensive costs for the coming year uh, haven't been nailed down yet, and usually come, um, we get real numbers coming to us in April. So the adjustments that we've made since the first reading are gonna be captured in the second reading tonight. Um, and so therefore there's an amendment to the budget proposal before you pass, before you vote on it. Um, the adjustments that we've had are represented on this um, long, mostly blue and green worksheet. Um, the worksheet is linked into the school board's agenda tonight um, as one document, and then there's another document that is a really big, thick pile of all the details, um, the line item adjustments that have been made. Um, so the big picture things that we've changed, you can see on this slide, we've updated some of our personnel cost estimates. Um, our anthem rates were originally budgeted at an increase of 8% over this year which was um, not a bad guess uh, based on what Anthem was telling us and based on what some, some of the other districts around us have had, but we were super lucky and our rates came in at just a little over 3%, which means that we were able to reduce that original estimate and shrink our budget. Is that just due to the experience of this fellow? It is, yes. Um, Anthem sets rates. It's, it's a little bit complicated because they have a... Um, it's the word they call it, uh, community rate, I think, for all of the members of the MEA Benefits Trust, which is how we get our Anthem insurance. So they set a maximum rate and they set a community rate, but then each individual district has uh, a different rate based on their own experience. Um, the other items on here are a little bit smaller, but all adjustments that we've made since the first reading, um, Delta Dental was a smidge higher than what we expected, but pretty close. Um, 
one of our plans, our flex plan, had an increase in fees, so we threw that in there, and these are little numbers. Work comp also had a little bit of a premium reduction. Uh, again, based on our experience, we have had actually, I got a knock on some wood here, but we've had really good uh, mod rate for the past couple of years, which is your experience rate of the premiums you pay versus the claims that you, uh, that the company has to pay out. Um, and the last one in that column is paid family leave, which is a new payroll tax that is being assessed by the state of Maine. And um, we got some legal guidance after first reading that said that we could defer those payments based on the status of our collective bargaining agreements and that it was um, possible for us to not start paying that tax in FY25 for our biggest bargaining unit, which is the, the teacher group which means that we were able to reduce that estimate as well. Um, and the last item on here is that we added back a position, and those of you who have been following along with us know that we've been talking about a speech therapist for uh, principally for our K-2 students. And during the course of our deliberations over the budget, since the first reading, it's become more and more clear that we have incoming K students <coughs> who are going to need services that we don't have enough staff to provide. Um, so that was an add back into the budget. Um, the total impact of the changes that we're making on the operating budget, which is general fund, adult ed, and school nutrition, is $527,315. And the detailed process worksheet that's lighted up in, in pretty blue there is uh, the worksheet that you guys have in front of you, the long blue one. So when our Viewers are looking at this, they can pull up the slide deck um, and uh, pull that worksheet out as well. So here is what the school budget looks like as of our last finance committee meeting on the 25th. The school board finance committee um, sort of reviewed those adjustments and kind of nailed down a few questions and um, made a few decisions, and this is where we landed. So now our total education budget gross expenditures is at an increase of 6.28%, and our net budget is now down to 3.65%. On the capital side, so we've had the three operating budgets, now we have the capital budget. We decided to defer two proposed expenditure items, um, a total expenditure reduction of $210,000. And those are bonded items, which means that we'll be borrowing money to pay for them, so there's no immediate tax reduction in FY25. But it does create savings in FY26 and beyond if we don't borrow those dollars at this time. We defer that, those projects. The other thing that we did in capital was to add non-tax revenue, and uh, we still, I think, have had some conversations. I know uh, we've been talking with the town manager about uh, whether the use of school impact fees or school capital reserves is the best way to cover that cost. The cost of $585,000 is in long-range planning in our capital budget. 500 of that is for, 500,000 of that is for um, advancing the school building project, whatever that may look like once the current building committee finishes their work. And 85,000 is to design and engineer some secure entrances at Pleasant Hill School and at Eight Corner School. Um, and so it feels like after the conversations we've been having, we'll be landing with using the school capital reserves for that and holding the school impact fees for some, for some of the more emergent needs that we've been talking about with incoming students in, in future years where our enrollment is really gonna create you know, some kind of interim emergency before we have a building solution. And uh, that 585 actually reduces the capital tax request. So in the first reading, we were going to have taxes of $681,000 or tax request. And now in the second reading, we have a tax request of just $96,000 for our capital budget. And I, I put that little note about the building project because if you look at FY24's capital budget, it's like, whoa, what's going on there? Um, and so I just made a note that the bulk of last year's budget actually was um, dedicated to the 
amount that was approved for the building project, but then the building project didn't make it at referendum. So that's just kind of hanging out there. This is a very squishy slide. Um, I'm hoping that anybody who looks at this, <laughs> everyone's reaching for their glasses. You have it on paper in front of you. It's still a little squishy. Um, but I, I like it in that it puts everything in one page, which is why it's small. Um, it has the general fund operating budget, the non-property non tax revenues for that fund, and the total net budget. And so each, each individual fund is represented and then the total, and then at the bottom, you've got the capital budget. And on the far right column, what you have is an adjustment from the reduction from first to second reading. And I'm just making myself a note here. Carolyn, you'll like this. I'm going to add a percentage <laughs> on that last column. Based on a comment that we had last night at our workshop. Um, so this is just a one page snapshot. Um, I, again, I like it because it's, it's, I won't say it's simple, but it's, it's all in one spot. Um, so the next steps in the budget process, process as Carolyn referred to earlier in her finance committee uh, report, last night at the town council workshop, the town council requested that we take a look at an additional reduction to the education budget. So this is just a little recap of where we've been through the process. In the first reading, um, we were responding to a budget goal that was set by the town council some months back, which was to provide a net budget or tax request that was less than 5% increase over FY24's budget. So again, when we were looking at that first reading slide, you could see that we came in at 4.68%. And I put a note here that that's actually, um, it's, it's impressive, I think. It speaks to the work that the school leadership did just to get there in the first place. Because if you look at what we're, where we typically come in on a first reading, it's significantly higher than that on the net budget. Um, then on April 18th, uh, after the town council had a workshop on the valuation, the Town Council Finance Committee came up with a revised budget goal uh, for an additional reduction. And that sort of odd number, 1,368,782, is odd because we had already provided the Finance Committee a week earlier with our reductions from items in motion, and that amount was 368,782. So on April 18th, the Finance Committee said, hey, let's find another million dollars. Y'all go get some more money out. Um, so at that point, the school board finance committee um, and the leadership team sort of dug in and started pulling down totals, amounts. And by the time we got to April 25th, we had found, um, we had designated a reduction of just a, l a little less than 1.1 million, and that's the number that you see here tonight. That adjusted net budget is now uh, an increase of 3.74%. And again, I have figures from the last two years so that you can see that that's significantly lower. And we heard some comments uh, from the council that in a normal year, we'd all be dancing in the streets because these are, these are great numbers and the impact on taxes would be quite minimal. I think at this point, uh, there's been a lot of numbers flying around, but I think at this point, we'd be looking at something around a 2% tax increase if everything was equal. But it's not because there's a valuation. So um, that's why an additional reduction target was given yesterday. Um, and the council expressed an interest in finding out what it would take to get to a 0% increase based on the FY25 budget increase and let the valuation just do what it does. So that's where we are right now. Uh, Town Council Finance Committee meets next week. Town Council's second reading and vote will be on May 15th. And then assuming that the budget that we passed tonight in second reading is not exactly what the Town Council wants, we will come back together on the 16th, which is a regularly scheduled school board meeting. And well, you'll get to hear from me again and uh, we'll have additional adjustments 
based on whatever they tell us that we can have for money. Um, other bits that are on here, I think Shannon already gave us the link to the elections. I've done it again. So um, if you forgot the slide, what, you know, slide two, now you can have slide 20 and you can still find out about voting. Um, I haven't heard if uh, they've set a date for when early voting will start. Um, but I'm sure that'll be posted up there um, as soon as the town clerk has that ready to go. Uh, pretty sure that's the end. Yeah, so uh, Carolyn has a long and complicated amendment, which she's passed <laughs> to Leanne because her voice is gone. And uh, Leanne's going to take a stab at reading the numbers. And basically what we're doing here is we're just saying, here's where we were, here's the reduction we're making, and here's what the final budget looks like. Quick question, Kate. Yes, um, ma'am. Because of the way that it's presented on ballot, is it four separate amendments, or can I do it as one big amendment? We've combined them in the past. Mm -hmm. It's not required that you do them individually. Just wanted to check. It's just long. It's very long, so be kind, folks. Mm -hmm. um, Motion to amend the FY25 education budget approved at the school board's first reading on March 21st, 2024. From the general fund operating budget, reduce the expenditure budget by $514,550 as outlined in the supporting documents. Amended general fund expenditures gross budget will total $66,048,328. Amended general fund bud net budget will total $56,277,632. For the adult education budget, reduce the expenditure budget by $229 as outlined in the supporting documents. Amended adult education expenditures gross budget will total $214,129. Amended adult education net budget will total $73,560. For the school nutrition budget, reduce the expenditure budget by $12,536 as outlined in the supporting documents. Reduce non-tax revenue by $12,536 to match expenditures. Amended school nutrition expenditures gross budget will total $2,391,656. Amended school nutrition non-tax revenues will total $2,391,656. The school nutrition net budget will remain at zero dollars. For capital improvements budget, reduce expenditure budget by two hundred ten thousand eight hundred and seventy four thousand, as outlined in the supporting documents. Add five hundred and eighty five thousand to non tax revenues, as outlined in the supporting documents. The amended capital improvements expenditures gross budget will total six million two hundred and twenty three thousand four hundred and seventy five dollars. Amended capital improvements net budget will total ninety six thousand dollars subject to further amendment of capital funding sources by town council. Beautiful job, thank you. <laughs> All right, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Um, I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on the process here. Um, so the slide that kind of outlined our next steps that, um, and Kate, correct me if I say anything wrong um at the it, last night's workshop um as kate mentioned the town council did ask us to reduce our budget further so both us and the town side um our ask is an, an additional eight hundred thousand dollars so um finance will work to get uh that prepared for the finance town council finance meeting next week on the 9th because of the timing, because our meeting is right after, this budget does not reflect that additional 800000 because the Finance Committee has not yet had a chance to meet between, I don't know, 9 o'clock last night and 5 o'clock today. So um, once they are able to meet and, and locate um, or make additional cuts, that will go to the Town Council Finance Committee. On the 15th, we will hear what... They are what Town Council is going to do or what they would like to do, and then we will vote on a new version the following night, the 16th. So once again, this does not reflect the $800,000 that was asked of us. And um, the other thing to note about that, when town council 
talked about it last night. Um, where they, they landed, it wasn't a for sure they are going to cut this. It was more along the lines of um, let tell us what this means. What, what are you giving up by cutting? And then they're going to decide from there. So um, I don't want to call it an exercise, but it's more of a show us show us what this means to the district versus a for sure cut. So um, where we stand is with this document is is where we were um, leading up to last night. All right. Is there any other questions, comments? Yeah. What, what I, I was. Somehow I, I must have missed this, but the reduction in the nutrition budget, I, I, I guess I don't, what is the benefit to that? Um, so the, it's a good question, right? Because why would you reduce it if there's no impacts to the taxes? The reduction in the um, nutrition bu budget reflects their anthem costs. Oh, thank you. And so because we are going to have a lesser amount that's due to anthem, we're reducing our expenditure budget to be more reflective of what we think the actual cost is going to be. But because they're fully funded, we just reduce the um, revenues as well. We mm -hmm. just take, a, we take that same amount off of our revenue projections um, because you want to have a zero balance at the, at the bottom of the, of the fund. So it's a little odd. We could have just left it alone. But because we actually know that we're going to spend less money, we do try to have an accurate projection for that budget, just like we would with anything else. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's a good question. I, I made a mistake one year, and I left, I reduced the expenses, and I didn't reduce the revenues to match, and it came out weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned that you're supposed to do that. So I'm happy you asked the question. All right. Are there any other further questions? All right, we have a first, we have a second session. All in favor? It is unanimous, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, agenda item um, 13.2 is the second reading to reclassify current BBAB student school board representation and BBABR student school board representation guidelines to BBAAA student school board representation and BBAAAR student school board representation guidelines. Um, we talked about this last week. Uh, we are, we use a model policy that has a BBAB that is fundamentally and substantively different than school board representation. School board representation is not in that model policy. And so this would reclassify it by renaming it. Um, it's in the same section, in the same order, pretty close to the same order. Um, but it would uh, remove it from the, uh, it would change the title so that when people looked at the policy and we're trying to find our BBAB, which if we pass next will be our school board self-evaluation policy, they will find the school board self-evaluation policy, which would be similar to all the other policies in Maine that follow that sample policy, and it wouldn't they wouldn't accidentally land on the school board representation policy. I'm happy to take questions about it. Um, is there anybody wishing to make public comment? Okay, seeing none. Is there? Um, do I have a motion to approve the second reading of BBAB as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Agenda item 13.3 uh, is a second reading of policy BBAB school board self-evaluation. We also talked about this last week. Um, this would be the new BBAB, which would be regarding school board self-evaluation. We do not currently have this in policy. We do have it in our operating protocols, and we do regularly, it's in our calendar, we do do this every year. Um, the model policies do indicate having a self-evaluation. Uh, we did not take the exact policy as it was extremely specific on exactly what that evaluation process would be, but instead this was more of guidance for any future board that annually they should do a self-evaluation um, and training that's required um, to make sure that we're in compliance with law and that we're looking at our practices um, and th evaluating them to make sure they're efficient and effective. 
Thank you. Is there anybody wishing to make public comment this evening? Um, do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy BBAB? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, agenda item 14.4 um, is the second reading of policy BBBA board member qualification. Um, this uh, is, a, is a slight amendment of this policy um, and is taken directly from our town charter and state statute indicating who can be a member of the school board. And again, that is grounded in statute. Um, we just took that language and put it in here. Any public comment? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy BBBA, board member qualifications? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to bundle 14.5 and 14.6, which is the second reading of policy BIA and BIAR, new board member orientation and certification of completion. Um, the new board member orientation um, is, is a rewrite and does have specific guidance on all uh, the topics that a new board member would be required to have some education about in order to be a, a fully functioning and a well-prepared board member. Um, this is a model policy. We took a lot of the model policy. We did do some edits. Um, uh, one of the big edits is that BIAR, which is the State Certification of Completion of Freedom of Access Training Form, is required that we each get trained on that um, within 120 days of taking oath of office. Um, so it's, it's important uh, that we're up to date on that particular statute. And the certification is taken from the website of the state um, that certifies that we, have in, we are, in, in fact, in compliance with that. Um, it made sense to insert it here so to make sure that uh, new board members get their training as required and we all become into compliance with the law. Happy to take any questions. All right. Is there anybody wishing to make public comment? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the second reading of policy BIA, new board member orientation, and BIAR, certification of completion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Agenda item 15.0 is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, seeing no, um, hearing no um, objections, I am going to adjourn the meeting at 8.25 p.m. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Bye-bye.